Well, welcome everybody. This is uh, Liz Geyer and Electra Porzel, and we are with the, as you know, <laughs> the Language of Consciousness Institute. And what we wanted to talk about today is mastery. And mostly we're talking about mastery, not of a physical skill or an intellectual skill, but mastery of your spiritual embodiment and what that looks like or how that is experienced. Um, I think we would all just like to climb a very slow mountain, come to the guru at the top of the mountain and go, voila, I'm embodied, I am in my spirit. But that doesn't happen, does it? Yeah. Liz, why don't you describe what mastery is for, and, and these things called plateaus? Well, mastery, is is as a result of lots and lots and lots and lots of practice at whatever you're becoming a master of mm -hmm. um and yes i used to want to just start in on a new skill and then of course have it be handed to me right but it takes a lot a lot of time and um so we have to practice whatever skill set it is we're moving into and as far as the plateau is concerned the plateau is the practice so just like if you're becoming a professional musician um you're you know you start out and then there's certain skill levels that you become comfortable with and all of a sudden things start to come together and that's kind of a, a peak moment and then come years and years again of practice and that's what we talk about when we talk about a plateau you know plateau is like a straight line that's the practice line um, and mastery takes a lot of patience and we have to kind of, you know, just keep trudging up the mountain in order to continue to build our strength, stamina, and capacity in our, in, in our knowledge of whatever skills that we're becoming masters of, whatever that might be. Anything else for you? Well, what I was thinking about is the focus of our work is obviously the templates of the language of creation. And we're also all very interested in our own, in the embodiment of our greater spirit. So that we are more and more, the phrase we always use is who we came here to be. So the driver, I think for everybody's life who's involved in this work is we knew we were supposed, there was supposed something we were supposed to be something we were supposed to do. And we call that process now of being more who we came here to be, the embodiment process. And we re and a lot of us, there's the two things that go on, I think relative to our work, relative to this particular process, is the years of practice that anyone who's in a spiritual work has done has gone on their entire lifetime, um, 50 years or more. And the thing about mastery is there isn't always a, um, you know, ta -da! you know, you don't cross a line and all of a sudden you're embodied. You come along and you work and you pay attention and do the work that you've been trying to do to pay attention and listen. And then something helps lift you up to a next plateau. Now, sometimes that can be writing a creation exercises faithfully. And the creation exercises, recently you had that experience. You went through um, and you, on Tantra's recommendation, you wrote a template. And was it template six or seven that you wrote that helped you kind of move yeah. into it? It was template seven and in the embodiment template. And um, 
it really gave me the language of the template I was doing. For example, I did it on I as partnership in the field of self. And so, um, you know, plat the plateau is, well, I know I have these principles I about about self and, and what self looks like, but I'm not quite sure what they are. I know they're in there somewhere. And so what, what the template helped with was bringing language to the principles um, of what matters and what I stand for as a self embodied in partnership with others. Um, so, so yes, the, the language in the embodiment template, again, focused my attention on, on more specifics of what the self has been trying to engage me. Well, the, the whole, the whole multi-dimensional self of me in for quite some time. Um, and so now I have to go back and, and, you know, write those principles out and practice those, just practice having that in my being. Um, what I'm interested in is, yeah, we know that you're on another plateau after right. this, but you wrote the template and then you had an experience of this higher part of you. We're talking about self. We're talking about uppercase S, not lowercase S. Yeah. So, so was it right away? Was it within a week that you had? Because I know you went through another spiritual ritual experience that might have kind of had oh. a whole lot of juice yeah. to the whole process, which I think it did. Yeah, but, um, definitely. But it's, well, I would say, interestingly, you know, I, I kind of have talked about it as going through the eye of the needle. And I was thought that you only went through the eye of the needle once. <laughs> <laughs> no. So it just seems that as, as I've been moving through the process toward em, um, embodying, um, that the eye of the needle has that process that that's coming up this way like right here you're still in the plateau but you're moving you know toward the next greater hole here and and being here this part of going through the eye of the needle is now happening for longer periods before it would be like you know I felt like I would be in that for a couple of days and I'd write some observings and then things then I'd go through through the eye and then move on to the next plateau. Well, this one was three weeks long and it was a long, long period. And I, I think you're right. I think being in the experience of um, having a, a ritual practice that occurred last, this was last week um, on top of having some really engaging um, conversation um, that helped the juice and then writing this this template as well as writing some observing I wrote some observing beings when I was in the thick of the uh, of the recursion you know as you're moving up um, there's there can be a lot of stuff that comes up and so yes um, that was all of it combined really really um, I, I want to say helped focus, helped me focus um, on going through the eye of the needle without a lot of extraneous stuff. There was a focus there and it was the template that helped me and of course conversations as well. That's, so, that's, that hits yeah. on two things that I wanted to talk about. One was all if you are if if those who are listening if what you've experienced is that a lot of the old historic stuff is coming up old memories old things and you're going like why are they here i've settled this a long time ago that is part of the process that occurs when you have a higher energy come in you come into you the embodiment process 
I think what happens is that it pushes that stuff out. And as it leaves, you get to experience it, which is that horrible time when you're going like, I'm on this process, but boy, I'm going through a lot of crap. Why am I going through this crap? We want you to know that it's possible to move through that as long as you can If you heard what she said, there's a couple of things she said. One, she wrote templates. She did the observing, the observing being. She did the, the template seven. A lot of people do template six, which is one with creation. Um, some people do templates three and four. Craving what something is for me is. Hers might have been craving what partnership, what self is for me is. It's important to use the tool, support yourself. There is an embodiment process that we're in and we were given these tools for this time period. So one, even though you're going through shit, <laughs> you know, go ahead and use the templates. Second, she said that the last thing she said, if you listen to her, she said, I talk to people. So she had conversations with people that shared what was going on with her both in the positive of, wow, I can't believe what I wrote. And I learned all this stuff about what partnership with self really is. But she also shared what a hard time she was having. So this is what Tantra talks about as being one with another in the field. We're, we're not alone. We're not gonna make it over this next plateau if we think we're gonna do it all by ourselves. If you're still by yourself, talking to you, you're going like, oh, rah, rah, rah. you're not going to make it. And we may not make it. The whole group may not make it if we all don't share with each other, give to each other, demand that others listen to you so that they hear what's going on. So we find the commonalities and we work together when we write templates and we post them. You post them on Facebook and you post them on um, Tapa Talk. And the reason for that is that fertilizes the field. It strengthens the field. And um, that's really what we wanted to talk to you about today, to just say, stick in with it, write your templates, be with others in the field, come to the template wisdom gathering that we offer, come on the calls that Tantra offers, write if you're part of the field of Tantra Mop, write on Tap of Talk. That's how we help ourselves and others. To the next plateau of embodiment yeah it, it, it's really important um you know there were some things in this process that i thought well i should keep it to myself because i know everybody's going through so much no mm -mm. um it's really really important that we we get these things out because there is there's there's a lot that's coming up for all of us um, and, um, you know, even if you, even if you just text someone and say, do you have 10 minutes? Can I just have a conversation or whatever? Cause that's, I think that's what has really saved, saved me during this plateau. But the, the other thing is, is that I do want to, <laughs> you guys may not want to hear it, but. I have to, to really honor the plateau because um, after looking at this particular one, um, I see the beauty in the struggle. <laughs> I never thought I'd say that, but it, it really it really was an amazing process. And of course, during hindsight, yes, we can say that while we're going through it, we don't, you know, we, we just, want to be done but um i do appreciate the length of time that this particular plateau um showed me um and i uh it, it really helps with strength stamina and capacity to just persevere to just stick with it believe in yourself believe yeah. in the process that you're in my experience is that when I say, yes, this is, I'm serious about this and I write the templates and I talk with others and there's a release and, 
and it's a perspective you get, particularly if you're writing the observing and observing being, instead of being in the thick of it and thinking, this is me, this is so hard. You write an observing, you're observing being, and all of a sudden you're on the other side of it. You become the observer. And in the work from the Newfield Institute that we're part of, if you can change the perspective, where you stand in the world is how you view things, you can change the act, you will do take different actions and you'll get different results. So what happened if you apply that same formula to what Liz did, she, she wrote um, an embodiment template, which gave her like, whoa, okay, that's what partnership took her um, and the observings and the observing being she did, allow her to step out of the struggle enough to see, oh, it's just a struggle. That's all it is. It isn't, oh my God, I am you, this is, this, you know, because that's how you can feel in the middle of it. And it allows you, then allowed her to take different actions, which then took her to a different experience of what it means to be a body and be in partnership, right? Yeah. But it sounds like right now that you have a much stronger sense of what partnership with self, uppercase S, is for me is, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, I really had to pay attention to self and honor what the different aspects were asking of me um, and what came up uh, as far as actions to take action on. It was almost as if, you know, we're now forced. It's like, it's right in our face now. We were talking about that you have to make you have to take some sort of an action and but what i found was in taking action of course every action no matter how small brought this huge relief it was like each action because i'd observed differently released a pressure valve that i haven't i haven't felt it that way before you know it was not even ticking off my list of to do's kind of thing it was wow, I took this action and the pressure valve released, which then allowed me to kind of breathe for a few minutes to then move on to whatever the next action had to be. And so, yeah, it's, it's we're moving through this. So for me, it's, you know, brand new. Before I would have been in trauma, been in the fetal position. I can't do this. I cannot move forward, you know, kind of thing. And now it's, um, we don't have a choice. Well, we're going to take some sort of action, right? But okay, yeah, your action can be writing the templates, using the energy, the moment to move to another, to move through this plateau period or up to another plateau, or um, it can be giving up and falling back down. Right. And that, I, that's what you mean by no choice. Because the truth yeah. is, you're not going to tolerate. I'm not going to tolerate. Most of the people who are listening to this call are not going to say, no, 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 no. We are not falling back down. We are willing to go through this crap and yeah. practice these so that we can embody more of who we came here to be. That this life on earth can be what we thought it was going to be and can be. Um, and I think it's really... If I step back from everything that is occurring on this earth, I say, we are in the vanguard and we can do it and we can make a difference for the whole world if we handle, if we pay attention. And it just means each of us, first of all, by ourselves, but second of all, with each other. So that you have a stronger relationship with creation, a stronger relationship with yourself. And, um, and more of that relief, the relief of the historic vows. One of the things Tantra said that we're working on this month is depression. And what I realized for my life was that most of the time I have put myself in the box. And I said, this, this is what's acceptable according to society. And that's suppression. That's suppression of who I am. And so if I say, no, not anymore not anymore it's not worth it i don't care if the next 10 years of my life everybody goes she's a real woo-woo 
<laughs> I don't care if I'm no longer suppressed, then all of me that was supposed to be present here for this lifetime is present. And I can do stuff in that, in that embodiment that if I'd allow all those boxes to stay around me, I'll never get them. And I don't want to be in boxes anymore. We, used to, we always call the boxes fails of invisibility. That's one of the boxes. I don't know if any of you may have it, but I probably do, because that's how we stop. We don't need to do that anymore. To be honestly, I think we do have help with the um, greater dimensional forces that are here to support us, protect us. We are not in a level of energetic space at this point where we would be left out to be, be hurt. I really do think we have that kind of support. If you simply call on that support and do your work and say, I'll get it. This is what I want. And, you know, Liz has just had a great breakthrough. Um, I'm, I haven't made that yet, but <laughs> I'm working on a lot of stuff. Um, but we all have that where we go for a plateau for a long period of time. And we've all done that years and years and years. And then something occurs where the energy comes in. Maybe it's planetary energy. Maybe it's what we're doing. And it, it moves us to a, a deeper experience of who we could be and who we can have. So that was the uh, short but sweet version of Mastery and Plateaus. If you want to know more about it, contact um, Electra or Liz on Facebook on the Language of Consciousness page or go to our website and message us and we'll be glad to help you out. Take care.